let's take this thing apart. So to do that, we've got these uh, 1 8 uh, bolts here kind of going through. So we're going to start pulling those off until this thing comes apart. All right, now that those three Allen bolts are out, 1 8 head, we can kind of just pull down, right? Yeah, yeah, we can just pull down on this whole shebang. There is the front, and there's the back. Now it is being held in uh, a little bit on the back here by this end plate, so it might be easier to uh, to use a castle nut wrench to pull it off just a little bit to uh, to get that bottom off. And with that off, we can kind of get a, a view of the guts of this thing. You can see a very solid aluminum bottom there, and that's where the bolt uh, comes back. Here's our fire controls, and you can see that it is they are very AR-ish in uh, inside there, and it's using an AR style hammer and all that good stuff. So if you wanted to, you could upgrade this trigger. All right, I just used my castle nut wrench there to loosen the castle nut on the rear. So now we're going to go ahead and loosen that off. You wanna make sure your bolt's all the way forward for this, otherwise it's gonna be under a lot of pressure. Once that castle nut is loosened, I can start to remove the buttstock, or the extension tube rather, but the buttstock's coming with it. And there you can see a large weight, and that's part of the reason why we can get away with such a light bolt on this thing, is that we've got this large weight that's, uh, that's acting behind it. And to remove the bolt, what we'll have to do is loosen off that Allen key that's inside there. So I've got the correct size bit here, and I'm just loosening that off. And then that whole charging com handle comes off, and this thing is dirty. And then the bolt comes out. If you're cleaning your JR carbine at the same time, the bolt's going to get a lot of crud on it, as well as the inside the action right here is going to have lots and lots of crud in there. Uh, you don't actually have to take this bottom part off to get access to it. Like this side port gives you plenty of access as well, and you can just kind of thumb around in there and, and get all that black carbon and junk out. Now what's behind this forend? Let's take a look. So I'm going to use my 1 8 Allen key here. I'm just going to loosen those off. And you can see our barrel nut there. Um, proprietary one, obviously, um, and a nice straight barrel with no contour in it and no gas block or anything in the way. You could probably get away with a really, really slim little uh, forend on this thing. And to put this forend back on, you kind of want the receiver and the forend to kind of equal out, right? You want them to be level with each other and, uh, and nice and smooth. One of the tricks I like to do is I like to clamp like an optic or a, a ring or a rail uh, right on here just to uh, uh, keep it steady. So I'm just going to use this uh, red dot here for that. Now that my red dot's kind of holding these two together, I can tighten down these uh, cross bolts. Now, you're just screwing into aluminum on the other side here, so don't go He-Man on these things or you'll strip them out. And after you strip them out, you'll have to do something ugly like put a nut on the other side or something dumb like that. So just don't strip them out. Next, I'm going to take my bolt and the half moon kind of goes like that. I'm going to stick it in there. And I'm going to grab my long Allen key and my charging handle. Get in there. There we go. I'm going to put my bolt to where I can see it through that hole there because that's where the charging handle is going to go. Incidentally, you can switch your charging handle around from right to left. I just prefer left. The charging handle also shouldn't be tightened down to He-Man strength. You want to be able to take this thing down every once in a while, right? I've got that forward. Next, I'm going to put this buffer tube and assembly into the back. Let's get those first threads started. I'm just going to use the weight of the assembly to kind of hold it as I'm going here. You'll go to a point where it'll stop, and then you'll have to back it out until it is level again and start tightening up. Now, I'm going to actually put the bottom part on here before I continue. This magazine block here, this is the part you could change out if you wanted to go to a different magazine. Uh, it's also going to be pretty cruddy, especially on like the little bits in here. This is a straight blowback rifle, so there's going to be some carbon that builds up on the inside of the action as you fire it, especially if you fire it with like really dirty ammo. Next, I'm going to take those two, connect them, and pop them into the rifle. I'm lining up the detent on this end plate with the uh, that slot in the back of the receiver. Kind of. Just making sure that they're even on both sides, and then I'm tightening that, that castle nut down. And now it's all back together. To function check, I'm going to pull the bolt back, make sure that the mag seats correctly, does not lock back, they don't. 
magazines come out. I have no round in the chamber. Test it with the safety on, test it with the safety off, holding the trigger back, rack it, release the trigger, and, this, and it resets. So this, this rifles back into operational order.